Look, all of the beats are done by BZ430 oh, yeah. for the show. It's all BZ430. Go check out the Bandcamp, the SoundCloud. Check out the BZ430 channel. BZ makes all the beats, man. <laughs> Album review, man. Dead and Hip Hop. Uh, Mark 1, soundtrack of Autumn. Before we get into the review, make sure you go check out the Patreon. Go check out the Patreon. You get a lot, man. You get to influence what we do. Man, just go support. If you did what we're doing, show your support, and we appreciate it. So obviously, you know, this, this is B's homie, right? Like this, Damn, this, we got to say that? Yeah. Don't stop front like everybody don't already know. Yeah, I know, right? People, like, people don't know. Like, like you come over for Thanksgiving, man. <laughs> don't he? Oh, yeah. my God. Say he don't. No, cause I'm in I'm in Atlanta. Is he Detroit? Say you didn't make him some yams last year for fucking. Christmas. <laughs> no, I didn't, <laughs> man. So growing up, y'all like, like silly as hell. Go ahead, B. How, how you know Mar? I really gotta say this. Yeah, man, this your boy, not? man. People uh, no context. Um, yeah, if I knew a yes. good rapper, I'd talk about it. Yeah, man, I, I've I've known Mar, man. Shit, twenty about twenty five years now. Mm -hmm. Twenty years, about twenty twenty. Yeah, man. 25 years, yeah, maybe like 93. Yeah, so 92. since a kid. Yeah, since a kid, since a, since a little youngin, man. Um, he went to the he went to the same elementary school as my best, my other best friend, Meech, and um, which is like, if you watching and if you from Detroit, y'all know Barton and McFarland is like close together. So, Marv went to Barton, I went to McFarland. We always crossed paths whenever we uh, walked home, and we've been cool ever since, man. Interest in music, we always been hip hop heads from the beginning. So found out he, you know, always knew he rapped, always hyped him up to try to rap. I know he battled for a even long as time. a kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh he, wow, he, he been, he been he rapping for a minute. He been rapping for a minute, man. Marv been at this for a minute. I knew that Marv was a battle rapper, right? So, so when 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 you come in as battle rapper, right, on on a project, the first thing I'm trying to listen to is, can you make a damn song? Because it's mm -hmm. different from throwing punchlines and coming out of dude's neck to making a song to make me feel an emotion. Marv did that shit. He he did that a lot on this project, and and that's why I was like, oh. Okay, you know you're not a battle rapper, motherfucker. You you a fucking rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like you can't. I just can't put you here. Like you you you're a damn rapper. So that was the first thing that hit me. The second thing that hit me was his voice because I met him once at the A3C. Yeah. He's not a small dude, but his voice is very it's smooth, but it's kind of like there's some there could be some violence behind that smoothness. He has one of those voices that like if he's coming at you, he's not gonna raise his voice. But the more calm he gets, is the more mean, or the more upset he is. And and I get that. Mm -hmm. Especially when, when it gets down to the track of Mattress. My nigga. Air like, mattress. yes. Because he doesn't, like, he doesn't really change too much, like his voice throughout the project. But on that one, you really hear how fucked up he knows his situation has been. And you hear through his voice, even though it's not like a crazy inflection, either up or down, you know what I'm saying? But he's able to project emotions through, it vo through his voice. And I thought, I, I really, that's what I really, really, really dug about Marv on this project. It's short, sweet, simple, to the point. So, did he consult with you at all? I know, right? It's like 30 something seconds. 30 minutes? I mean, we, 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 we talked a little bit about it. I'm like, you know, cause, but most of his projects has been fairly short with the exception yeah. of Wayne mm -hmm. Files Music. That was like 15, 16 tracks. But okay. This album and Heavy as the Head that he kept that I think Heavy as the Head was nine tracks or whatever. Okay. So yeah, he hmm. yeah man. I, I, so we, this is like childhood. We, we he always yeah. know like yeah you got you. I told him like, you better make a short album. Like, <laughs> make short albums or whatever. So he, he always fucking me with that. Yeah, and, and, and it was dope, man. I like the the myriad of topics that he tackles on this man. It, it's kind of like all over the place, but it's like it's Marv. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's the thing that I really liked about it because obviously he sets it off with soundtrack of autumn. You know what I'm saying? How the music does it doesn't feel hype. And I I can't remember the song that he said it on here, but he was like, I'm I'm not loud like summer or something like that. I know something to, something to that tune. And he's not. Like his music sounds like it's fall weather music. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like he really set the tone off with that. Uh, make make you a star was cool, but air mattress when that shit came up, that's that's when my ears perked up like oh shit, my man. So right after air mattresses, it goes to Will with Boldy James, and that beat, oh my god, when I heard that, I'm like yo, this he shit. produced the whole album. He produced the whole album. Yeah, he did all the beats for that. For Holy mm -hmm. shit. So that's, Marv that's did all the music and recorded the whole thing himself. Uh, he done this whole yeah. album. Marv did this whole album himself. Mm -hmm. Everything himself. 
That's crazy. Wow. That's why I couldn't be more wow. proud of him, man. Yeah, he, hey, he, 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 even even more props then. He, even more props because that beat when that shit came on, I was like, wow. And Marv, he set the tone. But then when Boldy came, I was like, oh, damn, he added a whole nother layer to it. Then it goes to Batman. Batman was cool. Uh, Shot Ring Out was cool. But Fire Truck. God damn, another one because because it really makes you think, right? Like like I, just something so simplistic as when you hear sirens, right? As a kid, you, a fire truck, you're praying that somebody's gonna get saved. But as you get older, you hear those same sirens. Mm -hmm. You hope it's not a cop because that could be either your last day on this earth or you about to be locked up for a minute. Or they were heroes as a kid and you wanted to be one because exactly, you know, yeah. exactly. And then it changes, flips. It, it flips. It flips. So I, I, I thought that was really dope. And then 96 draft, right? I'm, I'm a big sports guy. You know what I'm saying? I was wondering if you was going to. Yeah, yeah, man. Not 96 draft. But I'm going to tell you like this. It didn't get me at first because I, I felt I didn't like Nolan at first on this track. But because it was so short, like the first, like this shit looped like three times before I realized, it, it, you know, this shit done started over again. So when I came back to him like the second, third time, I'm like, okay, he's growing on me. Then when I went away from it and came back, I'm like, okay. He, and he sound Nolan sounds completely different yeah. on that track he did, than he did in his yeah, album. Yeah. On his yeah. album, yeah. Just go listen to it. 96 Draft is, is super dope. Who who are the Fat Killers? I, I never heard of yeah, that. I was gonna ask you that too. Okay, so Fat Killers is more your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a group consisting of King Gordy, Fat Father, and Shim Shim Bango and, and um Marv One. They they pretty much start off as a group mm. first. They came out with an album, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, back in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, they had a mixtape too before that, Too Fat, Too Furious, hosted by uh, House Shoes um, that they released. So yeah, it's them, them four. They they are they're known for making tracks like that. So okay. they 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 have an album yeah. like that. They first album like that, and they had some Black Milk production, Mr. Porter, Silent Riot, like yeah. That's so true. like that's they they start off as a group first, and then then they're doing all their solo stuff. So ten, ten tracks, 34 minutes. It. Super short. Like I said, th this shit looped like damn near two or three times before I realized, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I was listening to the project over again. So, I, shit bumping the whip. This shit, this shit really bumps in the whip. And, and this is my first introduction to Marv on a project. So, I felt like it was a good introduction for me. I definitely thought this was a, a dope, solid project uh, from Marv One. And, and one of the things I like about it is short, concise, it's to the point, it's very direct. When I saw it was like 34 minutes, I was like, oh, my commute is like an hour mm -hmm. and a half. That's what I was thinking too on the way here. Yeah. Uh. So I was like, I can eat that up in no time and really get into like what he's doing on the album. I didn't know. I, I know you told me he did everything, but I didn't know that included the production for whatever reason. So that added something on, on top of it that when I go back and listen to it again, it's like, oh man, that's, yeah. that's kind of crazy. So when it start with soundtrack of Autumn and I'm listening to it, I'm like, and I, I kind of get your reps, but also I wonder if, if Autumn is a word, uh, a play on words with soundtrack of Autumn, all them niggas, all them niggas, like that. So I was like, damn, man, uh, what a big and deep. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I don't be Richard reaching. I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe, but it's just something about people wow. when, when artists and they, titling albums and stuff like that. I kind of you would like to, to think that they put more. Yeah, into it, right? like yeah. I don't know. It was something that came to my head, but uh, overall, though, uh, <laughs> definitely albums like this is what makes hip hop great right because you can have a, a album that that is just great and solid and adds to the genre um in a way without over diluting it with a bunch of of garbage and mess you think about marv of course obviously as a battle rapper can you make songs can you make an album obviously when we hear about that those are the things that go through our, our head and he clearly showed that he can make songs his story telling its own point uh, from from beginning to end, it was it was like really con concise in the way that you know he had an idea and he and he and he worked on it and put it together. And for me, like the tracks on here is like make you a star. And and what I love about that is he's just rapping, of course, you know, see I'm gonna make you famous, I'm gonna make you famous. And he didn't do the he didn't say the title of the song to the end. He was like I'm gonna make you a star. And I was like I love the way he just kind of like wrapped up the song with that like that and the way he thought about that idea and he put it together and he executed it and it just really punctuated <coughs> like the song because obviously when you listen to it you think about the biggie you know the song that was on uh life after death and you obviously get the reference but still the way he executed and put the song together um really really stood out to me and that's one of my favorite songs here obviously air mattress um and the level of details in that story from verse to verse 
I thought was really good. Like I know every little, every line to Talladega Nights. And you know, so I was like, damn, man, that's kind of crazy. Of course, Will and Boldy James, Boldy James came on and, and I liked, you know, his input on the album as well. But obviously you guys know I fuck with Fire Truck. Um, to be able to, to create something, to put something socially conscious out there, to something that we talk about a lot on this show, not just be a part of hip hop, but also contribute back in a way that kind of, you know, documents what's happening in the world and kind of illustrate just being in, in Detroit or wherever, how something like a fire truck or sound of a fire truck can have different meanings in different phases of your life. So I thought that that was dope as well. But one of my favorite tracks on here is Rap For Food. And that was really one of the ones where it kind of had a lot of extra life and energy to it. And the way he, he did the beat and the way it would kind of start out at the beginning, it was kind of, a little, you know, very drum heavy and empty. And then that bass line came in and, and then, it, you know, he kind of just kind of laid it on top of each other. I was like, wow. And, and that was the one that, you know, I'm listening to it and then it goes on. And then all of a sudden you just kind of start vibing to it and then you turn it. <laughs> Then you turn up the damn volume because it's so fucking dope. And you so fucking dope. <laughs> like you about to double do it. <laughs> and then you turn it like, I, I love a moment where the song is so good, like you have to turn the volume up because you want to hear like, that was that song for me. And I was like, wow. And it, it was like right at the end, it was perfect because the album is, is kind of moody and serious in spots, but this, kind of, while it was serious in its own way, it was a little bit more lively and it added a little bit more energy to it. And on top of that, if you think about the song and the content of the song, the topic of the song, Rap For Food, and then you go all the way back to Air Mattress and you can kind of tie those together and like he's sitting there like just trying to get by on a day-to-day -day basis and he's trying to do this stuff to make it and want to be in rap and stuff like that. I was like, wow. That's, that's interesting to kind of loop that back, but overall, man, shout out to Mara, man, because I think he did an excellent job with this album, and it's it's not what I expected. Like, I expected an album where he's going to come on, he's going to rap, he's going to give you these dope lines and punch lines, this, that, and the other, but he didn't do that. He actually put together an album that had songs, that had topics, that had meanings, and... You know, you don't expect that from a battle rapper at all. Many have tried, and many have failed. So for him to go out and do that, I mean, salute to that brother, man, because I didn't expect this at all. And I heard Heavy as Head, which, was, which, was, which I liked as well, but I didn't expect this type of album from Marv at all. So this, this, was, definitely, uh, this was definitely really good. I've, I've been a fan of Marv, but mostly his, his battle rap stuff. Um, you know, because I love battle rap, and I just love the wit that he brings to, uh, to battle rap. So when this came out, I was I was half not really jumping to listen to it because I haven't been in a mood for battle rap. Like recorded battle rap tracks, I mean. It's just, mm. I just haven't been in the mood for that kind of shit lately. Um, which is surprising just because of how annoyed I've been, but I feel like, I don't know, just I just wasn't in the mood for it. But listening to this, I'm glad to see it. That's the opposite of what we got. We got a dude that's making a serious, I, I hate to call it somber, but it is kind of somber. Mm -hmm real project just talking about you know what a lot of rappers put on these facades of what they're doing and what they're getting and how they're acting and you know where they are this is the kind of album that brings you to reality this is what the majority of these rappers are really doing sitting on the air mattress watching a dvd playing video games whatever paper boy and <laughs> and i like that marv was so honest with this project but I like, he still had a couple of those battle rap-ish lines, you know, you know by until somebody kills you, with nigga, you about to be famous. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing of what you said really, really stuck, because Marv is one of them silent killers. He's not someone that you put on a track and you expect him to be hollering, even though he is a big dude. But he's, even in battle rap, he's not like that. Mm -hmm. He's just laid back and he just, Real tell weird. you about yourself, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how this whole project is. Now, the thing about this, is a lot of the production was a bit laid back and Marv was a bit laid back. It almost sounds like he's talking to you as opposed to rapping on a lot of this, which isn't a problem, but that's just something I noticed. It wasn't like he was like just rapping. He was just, it was like he was sitting down having a conversation with you about real life. This is what I'm doing. This is what your favorite rapper is really doing. This is how I feel about this. That didn't really change until Firetruck. I feel like his 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 
energy level got raised a little bit and he actually started sounding like he was rapping rapping and that was definitely one of my favorite songs too uh, that whole idea of a fire truck coming you really hoping or you hear sirens and you really hope it's a fire truck and not a cop car mm -hmm. i just thought that was such a dope idea please don't let this be a, or please let it be a fire truck i just love the way he did that 96 draft that was a song that i thought was interesting because i'm like how's he gonna be laid back on this because the beat was a little bit more upbeat, and you cannot be laid back on a fucking <laughs> Nolan and Ninja track. Because <laughs> right. that motherfucker is so goddamn mm -hmm. amped up all the goddamn mm -hmm. time. And yeah, he wrapped his ass off, and he sounded, he sounded more energetic. And that carried out through Rap for Food. He was still energetic. Um, surgery, he kind of brought it back a little bit, but since all them dudes were on there, he still was a bit more hype. I really enjoyed this project. I can't sit here and lie and say I'm going to return to it a bunch of times. But I feel like when you're in that sitting at the house, trying to be reflective type of mood, this is the perfect album for that. It's almost like this should have been a concept album almost because just the way it sounds, the beats, they don't sound extremely similar, but they don't sound extremely dissimilar as well. Like this is a very cohesive project and the way Marv laid these beats out, laid these songs out, it was just really impressive. And the fact that he produced, recorded, Rap everything on this is extremely impressive, especially for a battle rapper because they have the reputation of not putting out very, very good projects. Uh, there's very few that have been able to teeter on that line of being a songwriter and a rapper. So the fact that he chose to not go the route of just throwing a bunch of fucking, I'll kill your mama, you know, I'll shoot your daddy lines on this, kudos, man. Like you made a real rap project, a down to earth, solid, uh, honest rap project, and I really enjoyed it. Man, soundtrack art. <laughs> oh, <see? laughs> well, I'm not about to be long, about to be, it's, it's, it just feels weird, that's all, it just feels mm, weird. Yeah, I bet. This, yeah. this, is, this is somebody I've known for, since I was a kid, man. I, I watched him just grow as an artist from, I remember how excited I was seeing him on the 8 Mile DVD extras and auditioning and everything. and. I just, oh uh, yeah, just seeing that and uh, how all, me and me used to always hype him up, like, yo man, rap, rap, like, go ahead and rap, like, all that stuff, so, it's just crazy, like, do that shit him. you do. Yeah, do that shit you do, nigga. <laughs> like, yeah, we, 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 we used to be that one, always hyping him up, the rap, or whatever, so, mm -hmm. um, this is his fourth solo album, just for people who don't know, this is because he had Heavy as the Head, Wayne Fox Music, and The Way of the Wine, and, um, yeah, I, I was really interested to see him do this by himself, because I know at one point he was with, um, Mr. Porter's uh, label, My Own Planet. So for him to release that by himself, I'm surprised he didn't have help because Marv knows a lot of people, you know, you know, in the game that- Like even Royce, right? Right, yeah, him and Royce is like, they tight. Mm -hmm. They got a song on there called Suicide Squad. Not on the album, but they got a song yeah. on the SoundCloud called Suicide Squad. I think, did I say oh, that? You sent it to me. Okay, like, yeah. Yeah, it's a song, it's, he got a song he released like in conjunction oh, with the I album called Suicide. I sent it to you, okay. that shit dope as hell. Him and Royce was gone. But um, for people who's not like you, the introduction to Marv as a project, I think he did a great job of capture, capturing him because I felt like with this album he was fighting a lot of internal demons with songs like Will, where he was talking. That was some real shit, like him talking about like Drake saying that he was dope and Eminem because he's you know he's he was on Eight Mile DVD, so Eminem's been following him since Eight Mile has been coming out. He's been following Marv and, and all his career since then. So for hit for that stuff, real sh air mattress, real sh like it's like some real shit. Yeah. Some internal demons. What's the other track? Rap for food because he's been he's been in it for a long time now, and like I said, he's been connected and known a lot of people. So I think he just I think I like the way he was like you said too. Honestly, he was like really to fight with his inner demons on this album as well as still showing that he got bars because on the opening track don't beat with the geek squad i got nerds working i was like oh marv like that's that battle witty shit yeah. that he's that he's always good at doing man so like yeah just the witty marv i knew i was expecting that because he's he's always brought that on all of his projects that he released so and then plus i went watching him battling for freaking years so but yes oh I, I, i'm gonna wrap it up because I, I i just it just feels weird just like talking about my boy marv man but i really really i'm gonna do my if you're watching Mark, if you're watching, right? Well, I know you're gonna be watching. For one, I love it. you, man. <laughs> you know I love him, man. You know I, you know that's that's that's, that's no big right there. Sugar in the pot, uh, you stupid. But um, <laughs> give me, give me. I want, I would like for you, uh, Fat Killers, to make another album. Um, for one, good job with the good, great job with the beats, man. Just like Mike said, I'm glad you, you didn't you. 
you didn't keep it samey or it wasn't like all over the place with the production. I think you you had a theme and you stuck with it and you killed it, man. Like for real, from, from the bars. From, and I've always known that you'd be a good songwriter. You showed that with um, "Shots Rang Out" when you when you told the story from three different perspectives. I thought that was very creative, man. I don't think I've never heard you do that before. But overall, man, proud, couldn't be more proud of you. Um, I hope this album does well for you. I hope you get all the looks that you deserve, man. And great job. Yeah, uh, Marv. So I guess since we know you're gonna be right. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It, it, um, like B said, and I said earlier, man, this is a great introduction to you because this is my first introduction to you, and I definitely got. I got to know who you are, some of your uh, struggles in the game, you know what I'm saying? Like, from this project, I know that you are well respected amongst your peers, but financially it has not come all the way full circle for you. And, and it's just funny how, how sometimes that works. People that have money are fighting for respect, and then the people that have respect, you know, they're trying to get dough too. There's just a, a level of connection on this project, man, for me that, you know, because my life hasn't always been gravy and I've always had to work and fight against the odds to be where I am. So I, that definitely resonates for me off of this project. Again, your social commentary, just everything, man. Like it, it just shows that you're a multifaceted artist. You're not just a fucking battle rapper with punchlines. And that is very welcome. Mark, good project, man. Very, very solid. Um, like hearing the fact that you did the production uh, adds another layer to it. Um, overall, man, I, I think it was very, 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 very solid, very, very good. Um, I love the fact that it's 34 minutes because I can uh, get more repeat listens out of it. Great project, good job. Um, happy to see Battle Rappers doing good rap albums. Um, but that's not to say that I would not like to hear you just doing some straight fire, just spitting ridiculous, witty rap lines. But this is a very, very, very good project. Um, and again, to, to echo what everybody here said, the fact that you produced and rapped on this whole thing is extremely impressive. Because your beats are not slouchy beats. They're great beats and they go extremely well with the ideas that you're portraying on this album. They go extremely well with the title, the, even down to the artwork. You just really put a lot of thought into this. And yeah, again, it felt like you were just sitting down having a conversation with me about life. And not a lot of rappers can really do that and not make it sound corny and boring. But you did it, man, so great job. Hey, so if you, <laughs> if you do, if y'all get together, Fat Killers do another track. Let me send some beats for y'all, man, okay? Why don't so you just tell him? It, it's November, he's you don't to, see him in like two to, weeks. He's about, he's, <laughs> so if he watch it, he know, he definitely know for sure. But I right. told him before. Oh, told, Thanksgiving is next him, week. You gonna see him before, next week? I told him before. <laughs> hey, Jeez. good job on the shit, man. Soundtrack auto. Make sure all y'all go check it out. Get it. All that great stuff. Where can they get it from, B? His band camp. Get it from his band camp. You can listen on Spotify. It's everywhere. Spotify, Tidal, uh, Google Play, Amazon Music. iTunes. Everywhere. iTunes. You can cop apparel on the Rappers I Know band camp, which is also on there. So, yes. Get everything. Support everything. Everything he does. Mm -hmm.